Welcome back to the Montego Bay Sports Complex as we prepare for a kickoff in the second game, for the second game of this doubleheader as the defending the Cup of Champions, Clarendon College. They come to the tourist capital and start their campaign against Den Bihai. And uh, we're looking forward to this one. Clarendon College really a, a class above the rest in the Dacosta Cup in particular as they really cruise their way to the final of the competition last season and as usual they come with a lot of support as they support the boys who have done so well for them uh, consistently especially over the last few years and no surprise that uh, their support would have grown not only in the parish of Clarendon but all around this country because they do play some magnificent football especially when the spotlight is on them i'm still with dwight jeremiah and leje williams and do i want to know your thoughts on this matchup between cc and nb well you know it, it, it's clarendon and i've always felt that this parish produces the country line of talents coming out has always been turning over it never stops and it's always a good battle between clarendon teams you get good football because a, a large degree they play in similar ways just that you have like you'd have the, the the main thing and you have the light in it they're similar but just lighter so you might find them the wanting to play the same way but lacking in talent i go slightly different from most persons who says you know it's going to be interesting to see clarendon college having lost seven of their starters but you know when i look at their starting 11 today uh, seven of those players in it were in the squad last time out and the spine of their team for the most part carries experience from players who were there before and we'll talk about some of them um, a little bit more um, when we get onto it but you know it may not be such a big shift or a big setback or dent in the way they want to do things because of the fact that they have continuity as Lijay was saying continuity I think Clarendon has that game field here, Clarendon Derby, Clarendon College stepping out, so too them behind, some lovely jerseys I might add, two shades of blue, which shade will rule supreme, Clarendon College will be looking to make a statement, they just are the Money Cup champions, Mona High do that. What can they produce as a list of dignitaries come out to greet the players? It's now become a, a warm afternoon here. Dwight Jeremiah, the sun is out in all its glory. Right in our backs as well in the country box. Uh, it's it's going to be a time for the next 90 minutes or so. I guess that's a cue for the crew to see if they can do anything uh, in our backs there in terms of getting the shade. As Lige was saying, different shades of, of blue. We want a little shade behind us. But as we can hear the announcement of the dignitaries meeting the teams the opener in the Costa Cup unlike the Manning Cup it's not the only game being played in uh, the uh, the Costa Cup today at 1.73 minutes in a game I understand Cristiano was leading Troy by six goals to nil so other games are on and we'll try and keep you updated if we get the score lines well, that is some greeting party. See Jerome Laman there of Sports Max, as well as all the other sponsors. And the teams will now greet each other. We see the team out there in the middle, the officials in charge of this one. 
And it's good to see one individual in particular back out in the middle, and that's Daniel Parchment. I think this could be his first game in the middle since his operation and his athletes. He was doing a lot of VAR work for FIFA in tournaments in CONCACAF. So, yeah, good to see him back out there. Based in Trelawney, which is the neighboring parish. Uh, does some teaching also at Cedric Titus. Yeah, there's a confirmation that Danian Parchment is the man in the middle. And there you see his assistance. He's in and Reed. Reed has re relocated from St. Catherine to Trelawney. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Clarendon College. Marco Thompson in goal. The back four is familiar with the exception of one Romario Thompson who usually didn't start last season. But Clark and Bolt and Walters, familiar names. In the middle of the park, Terran Williams, DeAndre Gadamore, the number 10 hour player to watch in that holding midfield position. Or Shane Henry there as well. Sims on the left. Jennings on the right, Justin Bap Bap Hills through the middle. Well, as I said before, I don't know if I could hear you reading them off. So yeah, they've lost some players, but certainly there are familiar players in this team that will make them pretty much look the same. Kevin Price is between the 6-4, Den Bihai, Ferran, Prince, Marlon Murray, and Roger Raganat, the back four. The Sean Anderson, Sylvain Miller, Devo Winter in the middle of the park. Up front, we have Thompson, and he'll be playing behind the centre forwards, Jaden Heron and Theo Cross. Yeah, so this Denby team, they have uh, a skillful player in the middle of the park, attacking central attacking midfielder, uh, Dane Thompson, a player to watch, the number 10. Uh, he can unlock a stubborn defence, will he get the time and space and the amount of the ball to be able to do so? Players taking their pictures, captains. Gallimore taking over. Looks as if he was an attacking midfielder, captain to another Malakai. Malakai Douglas departing. So, so Andre Gallimore, now the captain for Clarendon College. I guess you can say Justin Hills, the new striker for Clarendon College, has taken over what could be described as. But the player to watch is actually Gallimore, yeah. isn't he? Six yeah. goals last season and one assist. So he's going to be critical to them. In the center of the park, I think Clarendon College has done well in ensuring that the spine of their team have some experience when you check from center back to the, the midfield and up front as well. So, uh, interestingly, we see in goal, not the goalkeeper that started the finals. And we're on the way here for this Da Costa Cup game involving the defending champions, Clarendon College, hoping to make a mark, probably similar mark. Especially if you try to compare with what Mon High did for the start of their Manning Cup campaign with a convincing win over Waterford, they'd want to do something similar, Clarendon College, too to just show their intent for the season. Yep, seven of their starters not here. Led by one, Kahim Dixon, who was at the National Stadium last night, came on as a late substitute against Cuba for the Reggae Boys in that nil-all draw. usually as was the case during the schoolboy football season last term when he comes on the park it's usually quite electric who is going to be the electric performer for Clarendon College there is Bap Bap Hills trying to thread that one through their number 13 I was actually going to say earlier with Justin Hills that possibly he took over what's now an iconic number at Clarendon College. For sure, for yeah. sure. That number 13. Isn't it, isn't it funny how they have utilized that number? As far as Denby is concerned, you talk about their number 10 as well. Odin Tom, number 9, sorry. Uh, 
Devor Winter, who will be playing on the right hand side of the midfield for them in that midfield three. And Vital here for Denby, you feel, because Clarendon College, they like to dominate. Um, I know in the finals last season, we saw them just going around the midfield of Glen Muir. But, you know, in regular rounds and early stages of it, they tend to dominate teams through the middle. But Leje, I want to put something to you. I mean, a lot of personal talking, and I know in your keys you had mentioned the fact that they've lost uh, seven starters, and, and, and it is going to be interesting to see. But, you know, when I look at the starting lineup, and, and I see the likes of, of Bolt and, and uh, other persons, Jennings and Henry and Clark, Hales, Sims and Williams, these were all in the squad as well, playing their part. It's, it's not like a start for them. They've been in and about it. It could be a seamless transition. It could be, yes, but it depends how those players have developed over this past year and are they good enough or ready enough to take on the, the, the mantle of the players that they were missing because you have to think about the level of quality over a number of years of the players that have gone. When you think about not only Kaheem Dixon, as a lovely pass is waited over. Yeah, but Keanu yeah. Jennings couldn't do a lot with it and would be disappointed. The Sun maybe can be used it as an excuse there for him not being able to control it well as we take a look at the technical director, head cook, bottle washer, Lenny Hyde experienced mind there it was hinted at in the pregame show about two of the best football minds coming together for Veer United and the Jamaica Premier League himself and Craig Butler the respective high school champions as that's a lovely ball played through and that's a good finish it's a roaring start for Clarendon College And it's Hales. It's a familiar number. But Justin Hills will want to make a name for himself. And he does just that in the opening minutes of this one with the champions ahead. Well, the build up again from Clarendon. Just silky smooth, exquisite, just going through the third. And I tell you what, must have had a chat with Kane Dixon because handing that number down. I'm pretty sure he got a lot more than just a number with a lot of advice and a finish reminiscent of a Dixon. They're not missing him now. At least not now. Yeah, at least not for now because that was a lovely finish across the keeper low. Even if the keeper had gone for that one, I think it would have been extremely difficult. And you said he passed on a few things. It's not only the number. <laughs> it's not only the finish, but even the celebration as well. Of, of course, yeah. Getting that from Nicholson and down to Dixon. Dixon passing it on. Uh, but, you know, you were in the middle of a, a thought there and, you know, Donald, you know, was describing some aspect of play that was taking place. But I think that somewhat answers some of the, the question in terms of how Clarendon will look and how they will play. Yes, it's only Demby, but you play what is in front of you. They look like it's business as usual. It's, it's like they haven't missed a beat or a step. Yeah, the style of play, I think, would always remain consistent. I think this client and team, that's set in stone. Any Lenny High team, that's set in stone. But my issue was... Can they execute it? Yeah. And they just did. <laughs> well, that, for a short moment, they did. So let's see. But I, I think it might, judging Lenny, I think he would have seen that it was going to be a transitional uh, period for him. And, and I think all these seven players that were in the squad that is now here, I, I think it takes for good planning. And I think... Uh, the, the footballing brains that he has, he, he knows continuity is a big part and he wanted to dominate for a long time. I think the effect is going to be a lot less than many think. I'm not saying that there won't be, but I don't think it will be less because of the system and the number of players coming through still. But I think, yeah, you, you, it may still yet affect the smoothness of which they do it. Yeah. Hales worth at number 22 last season, scored three goals actually. And uh, already clock in at 33 percent as we take a look at the finish and what a good finish it was really good finish going across the goalkeeper and uh, yeah couldn't place it any better no chance for the goalkeeper well here they come again sims you know we speak about maybe losing dixon losing you know players like malachi douglas but it's also the christopher hulls of the world the theon cupies of the world and also the Atiba Greens down that right hand side playing at right back. So But sure you're there. you're right, there was some really good talents in there. Here they are 
again Clarendon College looking to move in transition and, I, and I'm noticing something pretty early as well from this Clarendon team Gallimore who we expected and did play more of an attacking midfielder last season has stepped into more of a number six position here he is on the ball their captain for this season and we, we noticed last season that he wasn't really an output machine Yes, he was playing attacking midfield, but he was a player that just liked to take things over and he just really control the midfield. So I guess this will be a natural progression for him. And I mentioned players that they would miss apart from the obvious ones. And one of those being Theon Kupi, I think Gallimore will have to really step up and play his natural game more often to replace a player of that caliber. Yeah, it's a seamless transition. He's in the middle of the park and because of the nature in which he plays, as we watch this build up, this ball played inside, not a bad first touch. Looking for additional space here, couldn't find it. Had to reset a bit. CC still with the possession and couldn't quite get it under his pillow, Shane Henry. And Denby trying to come forward here. And uh, CC did enough at the back and they will resettle. Well, could be early patterns in this game, CC just controlling the tempo not playing at the same pace Demby wants to play at and just taking this thing out of it building through the third Demby looks like they're gonna say okay we sit in we don't commit a lot uh, you notice the press they're engaging them about mid block and not really committing that in that high press mentioned before that the back line pretty much unchanged and it's a it, it's a bit of a stretch you mentioned Atiba Green would have been regular on the right side of the defense, Dante Walters is there now. He would have played a few games last season. I remember Romario Thompson coming in in some critical matches when Devontae Hodges was out. Hodges, of course, is going to be plying his trade in the Jamaica Premier League for Harbourview, it seems, this season. He's dropped the weight too, you know. That's, that, that's good. <laughs> so I, I can't wait to see him at this level once more, or at the Premier League level, I should say. Denby trying to capitalize. Here's a shot from distance. Oh, he had to be saved. Marco Thompson going to his right, getting a strong hand on it to deny. Jaden Hint Heron. Yeah, turnover in the middle of the park, and I, I, I think it was was Gallimore who was who was caught on it. That's a good save. Yep, had to be saved. There's delivery inside. Heads go up, wide of the mark, and it's going to be, oh, it's going to be another corner kick actually for Denby. Yeah, second assistant read there indicating that it came last, last off a Clarendon player. Uh, Clarendon College not notoriously known to be fast starters. Denby again with the ball inside and Thompson. That's a good collection. Last time I saw them here opening the Costa Cup, um, it was against Lennon. I remember it was 1-1 when it ended and many were saying, well, Clarendon maybe not on it this that year. They went on to win it. So I guess that turnover in the middle of the park is something that will just get or would be not seen a lot in their game as the season progresses. Again, they've lost it in the middle of the park, but Bold came out to mop up. Hopeful ball out wide, found success. CC looking for a second here. Took a while to try and control that one. Lost it in the end, Keanu Jennings. And Denby. Looking to give as much as they get in the early stages. As I was saying in opening comments, Donald, Karen and, Karen and teams um, normally look to play 
a good football so yeah you may have one that is better at executing it but you do you're gonna get the teams down there looking to play so I guess Demby is not going to just sit in soak up everything and then just look to go on the counter yes they'll go with fast breaks but they'll express themselves pretty much challenge came in on Alwada Ferran Walters it seems has a bit of a challenge on his hands Ferran found himself in an offside position rookie mistake Ahead with these players on the, the near side here of the pitch, they have a little shade that I would do with some inside here. <laughs> Certainly, no threat of rain as we've had we had earlier today and in the opening contest between Mona and Waterford. And the sun far from setting. We are in the West. That we are. Thompson. And again. Not looking sharp with your passing, Clarendon College. Ball touched inside. And a bit of panic had set in. Yeah, a loose pass. pass. Yeah. A loose pass here by Denby, but. I think early on, at least for Clarendon College, it's not necessarily that the passes aren't sticking because that is happening, yes. But it's also the positions I see some of their midfield players taking up when receiving the ball. They're not often offering themselves as an option enough, in my eyes, leading to some of those loose passes. Yeah, I, I think what you'd want is one of your midfielders to drop just to give you numbers up, playing out from the back, which is what they want to do. Um, so sometimes they're just backing away from it. Uh, there we see a player coming towards it, therefore, which is Henry. You, you want that when you're building from the back. Players coming short, just not everybody can go away from it. Cardinal College in some trouble here, and more trouble. Henry, it is. Yellow card. A bit of pressure mounting. Then be actually employing a pretty good press to start the game. Hounding these client and college players. And surprisingly, you know, it's just two players that you see up front looking to press. Kind of not so apparently ready to go back to their goalkeeper which could offer an extra player to give them that number up you pass it back one of those Denby players probably will rush towards him then you can play ahead and then you have one less player to deal with not so for Carandon here just always looking to go forward not playing back and just waiting for them the player to jump they're jumping first Denby they have pressured the midfield of Clarendon College and now they are being provided with an opportunity here with a free kick from distance Ferran was the one behind it I think as he approached it he didn't quite work out what he wanted to do was leaning back as well so that always indicated that that one was going to be going over and it appears as if he was looking to serve it up like that's just a little chip over there i mean you're not going to be a goalkeeper from that distance with that chip and, and pace on it keanu jennings walters bolt Clark. Ball over the top. Keeper coming out to collect. Right on the edge of the area. Yes, you do. 
More team service from Denby on that occasion. You can sense it. I think the client and college players can sense it as well. One mistake breeds many. In this instance, seeing a lot of client and mistakes, not something we're accustomed to seeing. Also being hustled and hurried and brushed off the ball. So a pretty aggressive Denby performance to say the least so far. Oh, they're giving up possession cheaply here. But Denby hustling themselves. Doing relatively well on the ball at times. At times. Yeah, they, they, they certainly will feel like they can get something from it, at least this coach as well. In 2006, they were in the zone. Um, they did beat Clarendon College by three goals to one. They said they did win the zone as well. The, the second game did not play because of rain. So that was way back, though, in, 20, in 2006. So he would draw on that. feel as a coach he has had the better of Clarendon an attempt to charge down there Clarendon College will try again Jennings ball sent back out wide to Walters Bolt. They have pace at the back. Needed. Then they repel that attack just now from Canyon College. Uh, we, we recognize too that it's a low when they do get into that defensive shape, it's five at the back. Just looking to block those half spaces and ensure that Canyon don't have runners coming at them. Remember to download the Sports Max app today from the Google Play or the App Store. There's Clarendon College in possession. Trying to move through the thirds. Walters on it. The effort is deflected, and it's going to be a corner kick to the defending champions. What we've seen earlier, you, you, you felt the, the early goal uh, would have settled the nerves somewhat for Clarendon and give them a little bit more patience. Sometimes hurried in the past, but they continue to, to learn the system. But like I said, you know, it's not unfamiliar to me seeing them like this in their opening game and um, but then they would probably want to take advantage of that today even to get something from this game a point even Williams's delivery inside goes all the way goal for Clarendon College Williams with the trick up his sleeve Direct from the corner flag, and the champions are tuning up over Denby. I was just saying they could get something from it. It's gotten a bit harder for them to get something from it. A point maybe, but still not out of it, you feel. But it is twice as difficult now because they conceded their second goal. Just looking at the keeper there, just a bit too forward, backpedaling. And it seems like he got a, a touch to it. 
but it's always easier to run forward and to go back you tell your goalkeeper leave more of the goal in front of you on a corner kick that wasn't the case just now yeah, and this is a rare rare sight an olympico they call it when you score directly from a corner kick and Teron Williams the one who served that one up something that so many elite players try to do in big games and he served it up it's not all the time you have to look for your teammates you can look for the top corner instead yeah especially when a goalkeeper is positioned like he did They'll be trying to get out of their own box. Oh, well, we're looking at the Clarendon College going through the thirds again may not be silky smooth all the time but apparently efficient they are because it's two attempts and two on target and two goals but well, two attempts on target rather Sanjay Prince going into the referee's book first yellow card shown to 10 behind Yeah, the, the follow through was the problem there. Expansive it is. <laughs> he did get the ball, but yeah, didn't need that follow through. Could be quite dangerous too if it had a planted leg there and he made full contact with it. Mm. ACLs could be trouble. Here they are with the set piece. It's ironic, Mona Hyena, the first game of our doubleheader, had, a, had a, a, a tougher time in scoring the goals initially. But Klein and College faced with what seems like a sterner test. Have scored two goals from their first two shots on target. That's just a game of football sometimes. Manu, they weren't producing as prolific as Mona was. But uh, the point remains. Well, at least not yet. But efficient, I guess. Um, you're right, Leger. Just uh, as I said before, not silky smooth at times in the build-up. But when faced with an opportunity to score, they have taken all that has been presented to them. Mona had produced what, 20 shots in that game against Waterford. Yeah, scoring seven. Hmm. not bad now in terms of what Clannon is doing to match Mona. Mona's the third goal came in the 36 minutes or so, so still have time to match it. Jeremy showing a little bit more ambition though in the attacking third when they do get it there. And you can see for the most part without the ball, a few times they've gone higher but it's a mid-block two banks of four and then the two up front in that 4-4-2 four, four, if it gets deeper then it's five at the back calm as always from Mashan Bolt represented Jamaica at the national under 20 CONCACAF championships 
which served as qualifiers for the under 20 World Cup. Jamaica didn't do too well, but I'm sure that experience was invaluable for him. Opportunity for Denby. Then the ball over the top. And the shot. A little disappointing in the end. But they're showing some bravery here and quite willing to go at Clarendon College when the, the ball is turned over. Trying to do quick transitions. Haven't had any joy yet, but certainly will be encouraged by it. And still at two goals to nil, they will still harbor hopes of getting back in this one. Again, just a, a miss there in the middle of the park. It was Terran Williams, the culprit on that occasion. Another misplaced pass. A bit sloppy by both teams, but this is Deshaun Anderson. Anderson continuing his run, gets the ball. First time inside and repelled by Clarendon College, who will now try and come forward, but unsuccessful. Denver trying the one-touch passing, but it didn't come off just now. to try and reset themselves because that passage of play was a bit sloppy from both teams. And, and I'm pretty sure the heights that Clarendon reached last season, the experience in Coach Hyde, he will not hold them and expect them to deliver that, not just yet, because I'm pretty sure a lot of these players, uh, despite being in the squad, uh, probably were, as we said, squad players, bit part players, getting some minutes under their belt. And he'll be patient enough to, to, to get them some give them some time to get better. We're well, just having a look there, it's never good when a player goes down. Just standing there and not in a challenge. Held his stomach and then went down. Just want to make sure that he is okay. Kind of technical team just using the opportunity to sort of yeah, ask them to reset your two goals to the good. Just be patient. But yeah, I, I think Coach I will give them time to develop. I think that was probably a welcome break actually for both technical teams. I think a chance to give some instruction to their players. Jennings. Henry, back to Walters. Hales. Coming really deep to collect. Gallimore switching the play. Thompson. Ball going out into touch.
see Karin and College, I think, taking a bit more time to build up now. And as you mentioned, Dwight earlier, involving their goalkeeper a bit more, creating that 3-2 base when building up, allowing them to have that numerical superiority over Denby. Basically, taking away the effectiveness of that mid-block and that press when they decide to engage it. Certainly, and they've gone back twice in, in, in short time, much more than they have done in the 30-odd uh, minutes that had elapsed before. And that's always something, and maybe just a, a, a talking to from the technical team and the patience with it, because that's what you want and your goalkeeper. I'm pretty sure with Coach Hyde, he has to be good technically in terms of his footwork. That's where modern football has gone. Thompson now. Jennings. alluding to this year where Clarendon College can just be more patient well, uh, you were saying <laughs> <laughs> actually Jay what he was saying earlier in the, in the, in the game before that when he says no commentators curse <laughs> it had to happen eventually <laughs> nonetheless it might have been a curse for, for, for Waterford in the other game but yeah I think they're attempting to do that in terms of just taking this thing out of it here two goes to the good just be patient stop them be off the ball and, and that always works because when you do get on the ball, because you're starved at it, you're rushed somewhat to get forward and to make something happen. That's a good perspective as well, Dwight. Because also you could, not only would they be rushed, but they would also be a, a little bit more tired because they've been shuffling around so much to stop that progression from Clarendon as well. Challenge came in there on Odin Thompson. Mori. Oh, it spilled there, but he's looked to get it back. So close to him. The spill. Denby. Again, they have been unable to capitalize on the mistakes by Clarendon College, and there have been quite a few, in fact, in the middle of the park. There is another. And there was another instance of Denby not taking advantage of it. said before that the really good teams get stronger as the season progresses and we've seen this from a Lenny Hyde led outfit in them being slow starters but by the time the, the back end of the season comes around they're sizzling yeah they really get going for the business end of the season ball over the top hills Hales. Hales shot was blocked. I'm wondering if he was looking for a cutback there. No, I think he was going for the shot. <laughs> just the way he shaped his body. Just look as if he was looking for that. 
Thompson. Walters inside. They've had so much of the possession in this first half. Clarendon College. Thompson striding forward now. Demby, to be fair to them, they haven't been pushovers. That's a delightful ball out wide. Williams now on this near side. The give and go didn't quite work. And Denby now have an opportunity. Winter. Winter! Winter with a strike that looked all so cold from distance. It might have been well wide in the end, but Clanner was a bit light at the back for, for once there with Denby breaking well. And it was 3v2 with a, a recovering defender. Whether or not Winter could have looked to tee up one of his other um, teammates that was making their way forward. Um, the fact that he didn't score, uh, some would say that probably would have been a better option. But they did break quickly, and that's that's the nature of how they want to play today is, is to be quick in transition when Clarendon turns it over. It's just that they have not been quite good at executing it more frequently or on a consistent basis. Yeah, they're right there. I actually think it's been a pretty good game plan by Denby so far, but just the final action, the final execution, as you mentioned, Dwight, a bit off. But they are getting a bit closer. Clarendon College again trying to go through the gears. I think one of the things that the coach has to transmit to the players, that the Denby coach, is that they're a little bit too rushed in trying to get forward. Winter has something about him. What a ball inside! The flag has gone up for offside though. Just about to say Heron, Jaden Heron was supposed to hit the target there and he should have because he didn't know it was offside. So that was a poor execution. But I was talking about being rushed and maybe some people say it's confusing. I'm talking about quick transition and rush. But that pass, that initial pass to the runner or the outlet when the ball is turned over and then he goes into attacking transitional mode, you have to try get that first pass right. And I think they're rushed a little bit, and that's why they have not managed to take advantage of Cannon College's turnover. Just get that first pass to the outlet right, and then the runners will go and have an opportunity to go forward, and then you can pick them out. And I'm noticing some things as well about the, the balance of the Clarendon College midfield. Not quite there, and so often when they turn over the ball, there's a huge gap in front of the back four for Clarendon. And I'm not a lot of tracking back either that's what led to that shot coming in basically free on the edge of the box following that defensive clearance that's what you probably get from an attacking midfielder um, morphing into a defensive midfielder it will take some time for them to understand that th the best position for them is to be behind the ball most often than not and uh, that's something that Gallimore will will pretty much have to work on and I think an issue also is Unlike when it was last season, last couple of seasons when it was Theon Cupy playing that position of the number six. So far in this game, we've seen all three of the Clarendon College midfielders rotating in and out of that position. Well, here they are, Clarendon College. And uh, Williams couldn't quite get there. 
Yeah, we've seen Williams, Terran Williams going in there sometimes, and even Henry, Shane Henry. Exactly, and when there's that rotation, there's a difficulty of knowing who, who needs to be where in that defensive transitional moment. It's a lot of communication, and yes, you want to be fluent, and that's probably a good way to try and play it, but, but, uh, a CDM is a CDM, if you know what I'm saying. You, you, they're made differently, you know? And, and that's why they're, they're pessimistic <laughs> <laughs> but also like Lige said I feel they're the most important thing that I build my team around a good one or if I have a good one in fact they allow your attacking players to play and express themselves so Cannon I think is still working that out uh, I'm pretty sure they'll probably get it by the time it gets to the business end so and then beyond others you take advantage of it before they do for those who are just joining our broadcast and don't really understand the reason why I said pessimistic Apologies. <laughs> Henry plays it out wide now. Here is again Henry. Kept in by Walters. Good footwork. Thompson. I really also appreciate the defensive shape of Denby in this game so far. Uh, that's, that's it, Donna. As I mentioned, as you see, they get into a, a, a two banks of four and then the two up front. But as it gets deeper into their defensive third it's five at the back one of the midfielders just step into the back five to prevent and deal with the runners and block block the, the half spaces and they give up out wide they're a bit narrow that's a delightful ball inside at the back post and they turned out to be a clearance rather than an assist and then be looking to come through the transition unsuccessful again and i think that half chance actually came from that narrowness leaving the back post free the entire defense stepping across trying to deal with that right hand side yeah but i think it's a communication there that needed to be better and that central defender who's closest to the ball must set that line but the, the one behind him has to look back behind him across his shoulder or over his shoulder and just see the position of his fullback and see if they are picking up the runners because they left those two players they had the numbers there but the positioning was bad Donald, is just me or is it the first half just flew by? No, it didn't fly by at all, actually. Here's Walters inside and no issues dwell. No real issue for Kevin Price in goal. Yeah, there's you're... two minutes of stoppages to be played. I guess you're saying that because of the heat in your back. Oh, oh yes, <laughs> most definitely. Every second was felt. <laughs> You get the impression that Clarendon College will get better as the season progresses, but maybe then be have sp they have spot something here in terms of how to play them. With the fact that, based on this first performance, it seems as if the players that have been missing or have graduated from Clarendon College, especially in the middle of the park, their absence will be felt. Yeah, because a, 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 a huge reason why Clarendon College do so much rotation of positions is to unsettle especially teams that would man mark or are a bit disorganized when it comes down to the defensive style and if you contrast their two games against Glenmuir last season for example the first game Glenmuir was right on them and did a good job with that man marking but as soon as in that second game when Klein and College were just a bit quicker to the pace you saw how Klein and College could really dismantle a team scoring six goals so something to look out for. Clarendon looking for a third here, the save made and the follow-up wide of the mark.
One way to end the first half. That could have been 3-0 for Clarendon College. Massive opportunity there. I think it was Hales in the middle. Close to scoring his second goal of the afternoon. But his attempt just wide of the mark. But he has a goal to his name. Terran Williams is also on the score sheet after scoring direct from a corner kick. And the Clarendon College, they have dominated possession and they have the big advantage in this one. Well, it's a decent size, size advantage by two goals to nil. Yeah, it, it's, it's a bigger advantage you feel because of the possession, the lion's share possession that this Clarendon College team has amassed in this first half and, and it makes an interesting second half only two goals in it still then we will believe they still have a chance Welcome back to the Montego Bay Sports Complex. 2-0 in favor of the defending champions, Clarendon College over Denby High. And uh, it, it's one of those halves, especially from a Clarendon College perspective, where they, would be, they wouldn't be satisfied, but they would consider it to be satisfactory for an opening game encounter. Good way to put it. I couldn't put it better myself, Donald. But yeah, I, I, Coach Hyde, as, a, as I said, an experience. Uh, coach he is, you'll know it's just a matter of getting this one out the way and a lot of these players would have been in the limelight now not as much as they would have been in the team from last year so it's their turn now and you know you get those nerves out and you get uh, because they know the fans are expecting a lot from them so he knows it's just a matter of getting it out the way and they're doing well so far and as you have said uh, repeatedly in commentary that they will get better as the season goes on uh, as for Denby, as we're seeing them on screen now, I, I think it's just a matter of trying to execute better their plan because really and truly they have done fairly well and you can see what they want to do. It's just a matter of doing it better. So, a tribute is being done at halftime here. Janela Queensboro, a Denby High netballer, passed away recently. And uh, out of respect for her, there's going to be a moment of silence. Before the second half gets on the way. Of course, our hearts go out to Janela's family at this time. But the players and officials will recognize her now. So Denby High will kick off for the second half. Binion Parchment is almost ready. I think there was a substitution also from Clarendon College at half time here. Antoine McDonald, their number six, came in for their number eight, Shane Henry, who was on a yellow card, but also was one of the players who were guilty of turning it, turning it over in the middle of the park. Second half now on the way.
can then be respond and come back in this game just to confirm the the change with McDonald coming on for Henry well Clarendon College a little bit sloppy then can they capitalize no they cannot uh, still a little bit better from them at least the pass uh, was well directed there just to trap it was the problem but um, yeah that's what we said they have to work better at when the ball is turned over just hit your outlet with that first attempt and then the other passes can follow to the runners so Keanu Jennings also made an exit We'll tell you who replaced him in just a little while. Siobhan Watson, it appears. Number 16. Trident College coming forward. And then just running into some traffic there. The substitute, McDonald. Noticing pretty early in the second half as well that then they are deploying their right winger before winter a bit higher trying to keep him as that outlet in transition certainly trouble Clarendon College with his pace in behind in that first half as Clarendon tried to forge their way up the pitch here they come there's a shot from distance that's well wide of the mark still maintaining that 442 out of possession and especially at least in the mid and high block but when it comes on to leaving that transition you can see him there out on the right wing just staying by that half line staying on the the edge of that client and defense and it also pushes back Clark as well left back yeah it sort of pins him and it's not a bad ploy there from them but because we're doing that there's none between uh, through the middle uh, there's not a player through the middle what may happen is that Clarendon can afford to to shift a little bit to this side their 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 their, their right center back to assist as you see him coming across here yeah, he's with the, the clearance just to counter that clock got him more Then be still utilizing the press and Clarendon College unable to play through it. Lovely stuff from Nash on Bolt. Hills switching the play. Oh, that's a lovely takedown, you know, from Walters. A number of these players so really technically gifted. Trying to force that one through. Opportunity, not quite. The keeper was alert. Marker Thompson. Yeah, pretty much the feature of Denby is just that when they get it it's 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 not looking to have four or five passes two or three passes and they want to break the line and go forward so it's just about quick transitional play and a lot of times you know very rare you get goals being scored from 22 or, or, or referee says play on and they do and more in passes a lot of times they come more goals come from three or, or fewer passes in transition then they won't be yeah. <laughs> he's having a word with 
DeAndre Gallimore there who said that he got a knock to his face. But to be fair, Gallimore was pulling him <laughs> for about eight yards. So I suppose the Indian Parchment was saying, you know, tit for tat. Yeah. You initiated by doing that <laughs> pretty much. Williams touches it forward. Ball sent out wide. Good build up by Clarendon College. Three in the box, wake thing. Made that four now. Walters lost it. Picked up by Clarendon College. Big chance! That's into the side netting. A hand of apology for missing the opportunity. Apologi Damian Sims. Apologising to Terran Williams there, but certainly should have picked him out. And that's the patient that I think Coach Hyde would want to see. Uh, not in the shot there, but he had arrived late. A tough, just inside the 18-yard box and was on mark. Would have a clear look at goal. That cutback was certainly on. I wonder what Denby would be like when they are playing in front of their home fans and on their grounds. I think they are going to be more than a handful with the pressing game that they do utilize because when they have the 12th man right behind them, it would motivate them even more. Yeah, it's a quick transitional game they play and, and, and a lot of teams sometimes are not good in their defensive transitional phase and that will, will certainly open them up. And, uh, like I said, they're a decent outfit and, and they'll still have a hopes of progressing because in this zone, three teams will progress. And not only that, Donald, you mentioned the home court advantage that they would have, but it's also the fact that their ground is also much smaller than what they would be playing at right now. So when they do turn that ball over, it's less distance to carry and it also would be easier for them to sustain that press over 90 minutes. For we had noticed a, what they would call a color clash in that first half, not with the opponent, but you have to distinguish the goalkeeper, and his color was just too close to the outfield player. That's the Clarendon College goalkeeper, so it had a change of kit in the halftime break. Easier to see as well, more white. Deshaun Anderson will be making an exit here. Rajon Casanova is coming on. Suspect some shifting of will take place. This is a right midfielder listed coming on for a left mid. So we'll, we'll have a look at Winter, the number nine to see where he goes. Opportunity here, but he has run into an offside position, which was really immature of him. Just couldn't hold the line. And that was unfortunate because they had numbers forward. And they've been caught in the offside trap on four occasions now. Chance here for Clarendon College. Gallimore. Decent pop in terms of the contact he made. Had pace behind it, but just not the direction.
it will be really interesting if Denby somehow managed to get a goal soon. Casanova was cut down there. Yeah, it's still only 2-0 and they say it's a dangerous lead in football because you get a bit comfortable with it, but the opponent knows they just need one to get back in it. Now can see a goal changes a lot of stuff. Winter to deliver from this corner kick here. Here it comes. Good defending by Clarendon College. You see, that's the difference between the two teams. With uh, a break like that, you expect the Dempy would be going at much faster click up this field. Clarendon College, not so much with the quick transitional play, preferring to be organized in their build up. And probably that will come when they get to know each other a little bit more as the season progresses because on the other hand the clarendon college team of old when they are breaking forward yes. <laughs> it's a sight and there have been a couple of occasions when they actually had the numbers in the attacking third and decided to go back much to the annoyance of quite a few of their supporters who would be used to a, a CC team with with a lot more intent that wasn't clear properly now it is <laughs> McDonald didn't do a lot with that CC they have it again along that left flank can he keep it inside don't try to utilize his skill again nifty footwork here another thing i'm noticing about this clarendon college outfit you know in a contrast to what we saw from mona high earlier whenever they got to the byline it was an instant reaction for them to cut the ball back immediately with Clarendon and Kaj, when they get to that position they often take a touch right before putting that cross in and I think that really slows down or prevents them from getting into some really dangerous areas they're yeah, not so quick to create those overloads and runners Clarendon I don't know if it's the stage of the game they feel comfortable with the 2-0 but but you're right and even the shot that came that should have gone back to Williams and didn't go to him that was a perfect example where they could have cut it back but didn't Kenada Smith has come on the park by the way replacing Jaden Heron Denby Oh, that's a lovely pass to Winter, you know. Winter inside the box. Winter straight to the keeper. And it's banned out of the box by Clarendon College. Lofty pass there. But the keeper sees it all the way and collects. They'll be encouraged by that, Clarendon. And it'll be coming, as you said, Leger to this side for the outlet once they get that ball turned over they're looking to come to this side even that clearance for the goalkeeper he was looking to come this side um, which is the near side here where winter is they had a good look in there but maybe a little lower between the legs of the goalkeeper and would have had a better re a result nice touch inside oh this is the Clarendon College we know and then conservatism and the two goals really helped him to do this because there's absolutely no real need to rush to go forward mm -hmm.
Good crowd in uh, the Montego Bay Sports Complex. And you expect it to get even bigger as it approaches 7 o'clock. That is coach of Monroe, was coaching BB Coke last season. Kamara Ricketh. You can always tell when it's cramp. <laughs> so yeah, there will be a third game. Uh, we won't be carrying that game live, but Cornwall College will play against Herbert Morrison, two former DaCosta Cup champions and big rivals here in Montego Bay. St. James Derby. For many years, Herbert Morrison was sent down to Zone C and they're back in Zone A. And you can see the Cornwall College fans in their red and yellow waiting for that moment. And you knew that the coach of Cornwall College is Theodore Whitmore, who has made his way back to Mount Pleasant. And then subs walking up. So we'll certainly be pleased to see the turnout at least there in the grandstand. Fans have been starved of football in Montego Bay football. football. Well, opening day. Opening day, yes. Opening day, yeah. So Kingston having a taste right. last night. International flavor. The National Stadium was almost full to capacity for the matchup between Jamaica and Cuba. Jamaica didn't utilize that support though. No, the fans are optimistic, certainly not pessimistic like my d -mid. but <laughs> <laughs> they have to keep them that way, so they have to begin to get some good results. Yeah, they won't have that support when they go to Tegucigalpa on Tuesday <laughs> night though. In fact, it will be quite the opposite. Certainly. Nine o'clock Jamaica time, 10 in the Eastern Caribbean. That's going to be on your home of champions as well. Well, initially it was, it was because of cramp, but they have strapped him in well here. Uh, it seems like his day is done, possibly. More than likely, so they're looking to. They did have three subs warming up, and I think one of them will replace him. Hales. Oh, that's a wonderful ball out wide. Seems he has good vision as well, Hales. Sims being harassed. Ball sent inside the area. Clarendon College with the possession momentarily. They get it back though. Watson. Hales down to 10 men temporarily but certainly aren't playing like it Clarendon College easy does it lovely stuff with the exception of the collection from McDonald it was or Watson actually one of the subs nice touch inside 
but the movement forward was predictable. And here comes Denby. Cross. Sends it out wide. Chance for Denby. Cutting it on his right. Is that a penalty? Yes! Says referee Daniel Patchment. And the crowd comes alive inside the Montego Bay Sports Complex because Denby now has a big chance to pull one back. That was lovely play, a good transitional play, and that's what I've been saying all evening. If they can get that outlet pass correct, and then the runners, and he was a runner, a willing one as well. But once he cut inside, yeah, he was planted thinking he was going down the line. Let's have a look here just to see, yeah, certain penalty. Yeah, just plant the lead in the part of him. So that's the execution that Denby has been searching for all evening. Finally, they get it right, and it can half the deficit. They still have to convert. This could be a huge moment in this contest. Clarendon College will be making their changes right before this penalty is taken, it looks like. Damien Sims is coming off. Rashawn Sterling comes on. Deshaun Petgrave has come on, but we'll get to confirm those in just a moment. It's a chance for Denby here with Cross from the penalty spot, looking to pull one back for Denby High against the champions, Clarendon College. Cross steps up, scores! I think they deserve that, Denby. They pulled one back. And the supporters are happy with that one. You know, it's been coming. It was always on the cards. Cannon College was turning it over very often. And they just didn't manage to take advantage of it in the first half. But cross there. A goalkeeper gets right. Was always going away from him. And the back triangle there, that's where it nestles. And those are difficult to stop. And just like that, the deficit is half. And it's a dangerous lead, they always say, with two. No, Denby will feel like we're right in this one. Yeah, momentum is a crazy thing. Let's see if Denby can ride it to getting an equalizer. Or Clarendon College, can they get a goal here? It's with Hales. Hales inside the box. Hales looking to put that one through. And uh, Kevin Price had slippery fingers there. Almost went through. Almost an instant reply from Clarendon College. They still may yet do so from this corner kick, but that's what you'd want from your team. Just to go up the other side and score, having conceded, then people want to just weather this storm here, get this, deal with this corner kick, give themselves a chance. Corner kick coming up for Clarendon College. There's the ball inside. Keeper manages to punch that out. Denby up towards the halfway line, trying to turn Casanova. Oh, Denby. They're looking a little bit more confident here. And Clarendon College is the one that has to be doing the big clearances now. Oh, how a tide can turn. Remember to download the Sportsmax app today from the Google Play or the App Store. Keep in touch with everything happening as far as schoolboy football is concerned in Jamaica, in Trinidad and Tobago. There's also the Nations League and the Champions League to look ahead to as well. Clarendon College striding forward again ball out wide can he be kept in play 
Not really. No. Goal kick to Denby. Another player suffering from cramp here. Perrin plays it across. You talk about home support for Denby Donald. I could hear some support here. Maybe not at home, but they certainly have some support here. Yeah, they do. And they are vocal now. That's some good work by Petgrave. Almost messed it up. I felt he should have just laid it off having done the hard work. But got away with it. Hales. Good, strong challenge coming in. It'll be interesting to see Leger's as whether or not Denby for the remaining 18 or so minutes. Uh, can sustain that type of play where they, they've been without the ball a lot. They've been, you know, especially towards the end of the first half for long stretches, uh, whether or not they recovered with that rest and then coming out here, they do that and soak up a bit and then look to go. Uh, the runners uh, will, will have expounded a lot of energy and has expelled a lot of energy. So for that, I think they may have to freshen up a bit. Those runners or those players that they would have, they did change one of the wide players. Um, they may look to freshen it up yet especially in the closing moments to see if they can get something from this yeah i agree with you there dwight i think pressing like this or even sustaining that mid block for long periods of time can take a toll but i think the key could be the man that won that penalty casanova he's the fresh legs he's the one that might have the most impetus going forward for Denby. yeah and, and i think it's a ploy he's a, he's normally deployed on the on the right but he came on and was put on the left, so he's always going to cut inside, which is what he did there. So it's going to give you some directness. Deshaun Pitgrave is the one behind this free kick for Clarendon College. He has four to aim for. Referee Parchment. Just making sure that things are fair inside the box CC playing it around the area he's sashaying inside the finish surely is blocked and Denby will clear not too far out though Denby will recollect regather themselves almost came off They'll settle for the goal kick. Yeah, Clarendon dealt with that well just now because the switch was always on. And after two or three passes here, they're looking to go to the far side. Clarendon's centre back just anticipated quite well and didn't allow them to get to Casanova. Hales, he's been bright this evening for Clarendon College. But uh, Raganaut was up to the task there. Petgrave. Chad knows he's in a contest. No, if he didn't before. In the final 15 minutes could be interested here. The next goal you, you feel, as we often say at this stage, it's going to be really, really interesting. 
but teams want the next one. Petgrave trying to thread that one through. Clarendon College, they get it back, but they've lost it almost immediately, but the recovery was there on this occasion. A lot of action in the last couple of minutes from this near side. Casanova. I really like this player. He gets another free kick. The crowd, they love him. And so do his teammates for sure. As I said, natural righty. So once he picks it up, I mean, the defender has to know he's going to fake to go down the line. He's going to come inside. It's difficult to, Lige, I can tell you, when you're a, a taller player with a shorter one, harder to see that football, harder to deal with him. So, it, it, and he's trick, he has a little trickery as well. So it, it's, it's double trouble here for Clarendon College. I can tell that you could uh, you used to be that shorter man giving <laughs> defenders trouble, do I? <laughs> I played as a winger when I did play, for sure. So, yeah, it, it, it's certainly uh, difficult for the defender. If you talk to them, they'll tell you, you know, short, you know, best player in the world for a long period. Lionel Messi had other skills, yes, but difficult to deal with. And we saw him against Vardy Al in the World Cup as well. So, yeah, it, it's not easy for them to deal with. And he has some trickery here, Casanova. <laughs> Another player is down, but he'll get some attention. Dembi sensing something here, and they're using this break as a technical moment. Coach has called over almost his entire team to get some valuable information in. As we take a look at the sports max that moment of the game and Clarendon College, well, it was a wonderful first goal, wasn't it? Justin Babab Hills, their number 13, their new number 13, with a finish across the keeper, who had no chance with that one. There's a celebration. On the field and in the stands as well. That's our sports max that moment of the game. Not see, I wonder if he's still going on like that. No, for Clarendon College, the fact that they're really in a battle. And it's substitution being written up here, Coach Hyde. Pensive there. Looking to effect some changes here to ensure that Clarendon College carry this home. And the evidence of what we've seen, too, if, if they manage to hold on and win this one, uh, it appears based on how closely match. Uh, these two teams are showing on the night. Could be a very, very valuable win for Clarendon College in this group. Yeah, most definitely, Dwight. Especially seeing the quality of the other teams in the group as well. Central higher team that faced Clarendon College in the Dacosta Cup final two seasons ago. Edwin Allen was always a, a tough out as well. It's a really tough group and yeah, Lennon is in there as well so you know in the past they, they, they know what it's like to win stuff as well so yeah it could be a valuable win here but it's not done yet they haven't really completed that still 10 or so minutes to go and I feel they need another goal Trying to switch the play across to young Casanova. We're going to have that 
discussion about play of the game in a short while, gentlemen. I suppose it's not as clear cut as per usual. Certainly not clear cut, and I think you can look from one end of the park to the next. Casanova trying to shake off his marker. Referee Parchment tells him to get up on this occasion. And I tell what, you what a handful he has been. And, and, and your handful he has put himself up to. You feel if he continues like this and Lennon were to get something out of it, he could be in a conversation as well. It's a, it's a real good cameo from him. Here's Denby. Casanova is waiting on it. Inside the area. Oh, it's just away from him. He didn't look up quick enough. I felt Kenardo Smith to lay it off first time. When he saw him, it was a little bit late. And the it pass was wasn't late. Yeah, you, you should, we always say to our players, look forward first. See if you can break a line before you look wide. That didn't happen. Yeah, and I think maybe it was eventually caught in two minds as well. The, the shot was there to be taken also, but probably tried to do the smart thing and in the end rushed it and that pass was overhit. Yeah, but that was a good moment for them. They had the Clarendon College defense backpedaling. There were gaps in it as well. Dante Walters has been replaced as the Denby. Trying to make use of this possession in the attacking third. The keeper under it. <laughs> That's a good catch under the circumstances. I will tell you, I was about to say that. Not as simple as many would feel, but that one skied up and he was almost in the goal. So he knew his margin for error was not there any at all. Good take. Yeah, that's like a feel about you guys are cricket men taking one under the lights on the boundary. The crowd getting on him as well as he's about to catch it. You're suggesting that Dono is that good that he plays some cricket on the lights? No, I, I said that you're cricket men. I didn't say you guys played cricket on the lights. <laughs> you could watch it as well. <laughs> that's exactly what he meant, Dwight Jeremiah. <laughs> I don't know what you're on about. Well, I used to play it, so I think he should just talk about you. <laughs> I'm a cricket man through and through. <laughs> All right. But they're committing more players as well, Denby. In the final third, we're seeing four or five players getting up there. Yes, sometimes desperation does allow you to do that. You have no other option. Just to confirm that Nair Anderson came on the park. Originally had the number 22, but now where's the number two? Banged up field. After chase, well, the keeper again saw it all the way. Seems as if Clarendon College will be happy to see this one out. They haven't had it their own way this evening at all. Free kick to Clarendon College. Gallimore. I figured it was going wide, you know, but Kevin Price was saying that he wasn't going to take any chance with that one.
Here's the corner kick at the near post. It's going to be a, another set piece coming up for Clarendon College. Corner kick again. Oh, deja vu. Well, they did score from one in that first half. Turn Williams, so. He's now here he on duty, is it? No. So, yeah, just looking to catch Denby out at the near post. <laughs> it's Williams again. Talk about lightning in a bottle. Again. Third time wasn't the charm there. Pitgrave trying to thread that one through that's lovely but the keeper I think he was a little bit wrong footed there with that shot from McDonald but he held on that in was the a, end that was a good save Donald. a really good save he was going the other way took a wicked deflection that's all reflex there and uh, his outstretched hand was kind to him as well in terms of when he made contact it fell kindly to him after yeah, going the other way for sure. Just pat it down. And stood up nicely for him. Still in his zone. I think the way Dembe has come out and played in the second half, you feel... It's been commendable. Yes. Williams sends it across, though, as Cardin College looking to get a third and... Not quite up to the task on that occasion. Casanova looking to break free. And uh, was he cut down? Damien Parchment does nothing. And, and on that play, I have to come into it with it. Coming to you, Lee in terms of the play of the game, I, I was saying that the way they've came out and played the second half, they've given more worry to Clarendon College. And I feel they had to rely on and college more on their defensive exploit in the second half and bolt has been really instrumental in that and i i think he's in the conversation for sure he would have been my pick for sure exactly. at, at this current moment i actually agree with you not only in the second half with what he's had to do defensively but i think the responsibility that he has taken especially when Klein and were building up especially when their midfield was a bit shaky in terms of keeping possession i think he has really led the team from the back going forward and even in the first half when Denby really couldn't get their thing together even when they attempted he was always there to try and tort that having said that I think the back line of Clarendon College two members in particular Romaria Thompson and Nashon Bowles probably have been the standout performers from a Clarendon College perspective yeah so that's why we were mentioning Bold. yeah both of them at the heart of the defense there has been good so you know I, I just think Bolt hedges but I think that's the way we're gonna pick that player the game from if it stays this way Williams. McDonald lost it. Miller trying to come forward. Dead behind with numbers here. Miller running out of room and probably breath. That was excellent from both. I tell you, just watch there. There was a lot of defensive principle that just came to play. He knew he was outnumbered. He couldn't engage because there was a lot of space in behind him. And he delayed, he delayed, he delayed. Kept his composure and restraint and just waited for it every touch. Then he went forward. Excellent defending from him. And that cements it for me as, as the player of the game. We have five minutes of stoppages to be played. Miller, after that run, <laughs> needs some attention need some oxygen that too yep if the scoreline remains the same I can say that it has been contrasting victories for the defending champions Mona looked to have been on easy street with their seminal spanking of Waterford and Clarendon College in in really a, a tough Clarendon derby here right now with the edge 
two goals to one. Yeah, you're right with that. And take nothing away from Mona. Let me put that disclaimer out first. But as you rightly said, a tough opponent um, compared to what Mona faced. Um, Dembi has put up more resistance than what Waterford did. Uh, but yeah, it, you, you play what is in front of you and Mona dispatched them with ease. Kind of much work for them. And maybe it's good for them as well. Um, so the mindset, if these boys are thinking that they are going to live on the exploits and achievement of the players before them, no such thing. Play teams are not fearing them. But I put it to you though that it is, it's never been easy street for Clarendon College, especially with the first stage. Yes, they usually win every game, but it has been such a battle in many of those games. I agree because I said earlier in my commentary that I saw them here against Lennon uh, a couple of seasons back and it was 1-1 that the game ended. Uh, slow starters, they went on to win that season, but many felt at that time that they were vulnerable, but they still went on to take it home. Well, that's another hopeful ball, but Denby again, they have numbers forward. Hills hasn't been hasn't been too bad either. Of course, he did finish one, but uh, he's also tried to be a creator for his team. Ball swung inside. Trying to control the bouncing ball inside the area. Cross, but couldn't. Yeah, then be going whoop one. Now just trying to create some mayhem in the kind and defensive area. Giving them some decisions to make. Casanova trying to control. About 90 seconds to go here. Miller back on the park. Then be they went high up. Ball played out wide. Clarendon College will eat up a few more seconds here with Hales. And I think Hales doing that just really indicates the game that Clarendon College have been in for this evening. Yeah, certainly you're right, Lige. They normally probably just look to go forward again, but it also shows maturity as well, understanding that why to put it into the box and risk a counter just try and use up some time and it's really in the dying minutes no seconds remain you feel crosses down but i think that should be that in short order Wins a win, they'll tell you nonetheless, and you get that cover out the system. They look to build from this, but there's easier days you feel in this group one or two. But then be you feel will be listening out to hear how they progress. You suspect that they'll have a say in the teams that progress from this zone age. Well, Denby again coming forward, probably the last chance here, free kick. 
They'd want to utilize this. So Wayne Miller again with another driving run, getting the foul. I think they may be sending players up here. Denby could be the last chance for them. Yeah, some would say send everybody up, but they know there's a long way to go and goal difference could really come. This one punted inside and Clarendon College striding forward here. It's a foot race. That's the end of the game. A win is a win. A win is a win. Clarendon College the defending champions will say so. Will come away with the three points. They had to work also very hard. Hales, Justin Hales and Terran Williams on the score sheet. For the defending champions. But uh, Denby, they did pull one back in that second half. And uh, yeah. They should be proud of their efforts against the defending champions. 90 minutes elapsed. And uh, although CC they have come away with all the marbles, I suppose that Denby High would have their heads held high. Certainly they did give a good representation of themselves and really were in with a chance to get something from this game. And if they were a bit better in their transition in that first half, like they were in that second half, you suspect they could have gotten something from this there. Much to look forward to uh, from them and Clarendon College, as we say, will get better. They're certainly a team in transition, that much we can see. And earlier, we saw a Mona team that looked like it's just a juggernaut looking to continue where they left off from last season. So it is two goals to nil, the final score. We take a look at the highlights from this one. Parchment got us on the way and it was Clarendon College early in this one, fourth minute and they were on the score sheet and their number 13 there getting on that, the end of that one, good run and smart finish and Clarendon College were off and running in the 2024, the Costa Cup season. It looked like it was going to be an easy day but little did we know that Denby had other ideas. Uh, but they went further behind later after this one. Good chance for them. But on the 22nd minute, Williams from the corner, straight in. Goalkeeper, peg on his face. And nobody to blame but himself. This, despite him trying to point fingers at others, it was all about him. And you will not want to see that again. And just like that, Clarendon College were two goals to the good. Denby get going forward in their transition. Still looking to break here, and that was a good one. Felt he had runners that he could have played in. Chose to go for the shot, but that was not the right decision in the end. And Clarendon College again looking. Should have gone three goals ahead in that first half. That didn't happen. And then Again, it was winter here, stinging the palm of a Clarendon College goalkeeper. And in that situation, didn't get the better of him. And at the penalty, won by their substitute, Casanova, cutting inside, drawing the challenge. And just like that, Denby had a chance to half the deficit, which they did. Smartly taken penalty and nestled in the bottom triangle and a game was on and Demby was looking to try and get something from this and uh, they will feel like they would have gotten something from this clan and college was just trying to close it out uh, good reaction save there and uh, they didn't get anything more clan and college but that was a good save so Fame and Parchment called an end to it and that was all she wrote for this one.
And we look at the stats, the big one at the top that matters, two goals to one for Clarendon College. And they had eight shots, three on target. Uh, Demby two, both were on target. Four fouls committed by Clarendon, seven by Demby. Yellow cards apiece, no red card in this one. A four offsides call against Demby. Uh, three corners for Clarendon College, just edging it to two. And the possession significantly improved for Demby in this second half. 42% of the possession. Uh, we have the player of the game, both from Clarendon College. Melissa Johnson from Consumer Affairs will make that presentation. And Kimani will do the interview after. It's actually Gerard down here, uh, Dwight, but nonetheless, uh, time for the presentation of the water player to match. Melissa Johnson making the presentation. She is the head of consumer uh, marketing. And, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Tinko. And uh, yeah, let's get a word in now with the man of the match. Yeah, Bolt, let me just start by asking for your performance. Take of this one, how would you rate how you played this game? Well, you know, you know, it's a young team, so I'm the most, I'm the more experienced one, so I have to step up to them. Yeah, of course, you know, a lot of talk about coming into this game, especially when they remember how you in this Vanti Hot. A lot of people were wondering how you would, of course, fit into the team, but you did well. Uh, would you agree with them? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a young team, yeah. So we are trying to, build, we are trying to build through the season, yeah. Yeah, uh, of course, you're getting ready for your next game. Uh, what would the result you would want to be for your next game? Well, I think we don't worry about the results, yeah? We're just trying to play good football and the results will come. Yeah, but we're not focusing on the results. All right, thank you so much. And yeah. congratulations thank to you, you right? Much, yeah. yeah, I'll see you in another match there. And you now let's have a, a, a chat now with Coach Garfield Carney. Uh, Coach, not the result you would have wanted, of course, playing against the club. You knew it would have been a tough task, but going on to the end of the game, especially after you scored, your team picked up. Uh, do you think you should have made more of the chances you got coming up to that point? Well, we went down 2 0 first half. Not something that we actually planned for. I think we paid them too much respect in the first half. Then after time I spoke to them and I told them that we need to lift our standard because we can play and I'm proud of them the way how they respond. Yeah, I, I, I did notice that you were a little bit upset about a couple of things going into the second half, but do you think your team picked up well as you were talking to them from the sidelines? Yes, um, you have to encourage them, you have to motivate them, you have to try to inspire them for them to do better. So that's exactly what I was doing. Yeah, not going away here with any points, but after you've seen what you have to work with for the rest of the season, how confident are you about the rest of it? I'm pretty confident that we can make it through to the next round of the competition, and then we take it from there. Our next match is against Clown McKay, and we have to get three points at home. All right, thank you, Coach, and good luck to your next game. Uh, coach Garfield Carney there from NB Hyde. Now time to talk to more letter, Lenny Teacher Hyde, and he will obviously be a happy man about how his team started. Yeah, man, I'm a, a very happy for the three points. I see some glimpses of what I want to see, how we pass the ball and how we move the ball. In this league now, this team have to grow in the league, and you will see some emerging players coming up coming up this season out of this team. But I'm pleased with what I saw today. Yeah, losing seven players, of course, from last season, seven yeah. starters at that, yeah. uh, it must have been hard to adjust. Some people would have been questioning the team coming after them, but it seems that like they've been uh, learning the system as good as they can. Yeah, man, definitely. And, and with time, I think we'll get that chemistry. But, you know, we just have to continue work. It's how we prepare the team week by week now. So what we do this week, going into the next game it's going to be important and as I said people have to start challenge for their position I'm looking and seeing the best player to fit in certain position but I'm pleased with the performance all right coach thank you and congratulations again thank you yeah. yep interesting words here from Lenny Teacher Hyde in regards to his team and what he expects from them this season and the progression that he expects for the remainder of the season. As far as our coverage is concerned of the schoolboy football season, it continues on Saturday, Veer Technical up against Kem Skill, 12.45 p.m., 1.45 in the Eastern Caribbean, and then right after that, this is gonna be a big one. Glenmuir, last year's beaten finalists, 
they face off with Gulf Maceo, 3.30 p.m. Jamaica time, 4.30 in the Eastern Caribbean. So, Clarendon College with a 2-1 victory over Denby High. It probably was a little bit more difficult than they anticipated, but in the end, they got the three points and they're off to a winning start as far as the defense of their Dacosta Cup crown. It's goodbye from all of us here on the home of champions from the Montego Bay Sports Complex in Catherine Hall. People am ready now. All right then, Pico, Manning Cup, Oliver Yashil, you make me link up. See what the champions cup, Ben Francis, what a cup which team are in the championship this season. Yo, it's a Bob and Diver School, I got finished the league and beat now. Which you that got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, it's a Messi fans are roll out all about the flag for a vehicle. Looking at the crowd, but slow the supporters from school and community too. People, nothing at the stand, some are little prairie. Yeah, they must have a watch it on TV too. Country and turn your night for one reason. It's a schoolboy football. Go come, look one, look all. Which team are the best and I can better than the best and if I hear it, beat your chest. It's a schoolboy football. A team could rise and a team could fall. But they never will know until the whistle blows around. Come enjoy the show. Yo, it's a that competition I never have a nice up. People love see when boy I get nice up on the field. I'm gonna score from far and them love with peaceful and the youths now. Are. Yo, it's a schoolboy football, no local. The youths are move on to international big league. And I steal people out, but member which party start. It's a schoolboy football. Come, come, look one, look all. Which team are the best and I better than the best and if I hear team beat your chest. It's a schoolboy.